Kendall is back in Britain. We talked to him on the eve of his return to Goodison Park for ITV's live match tomorrow. We bring you the best of last week's First Division action. Arsenal lead the way as we reach the Christmas break. We highlight the strange case of Crystal Palace, who today are away when they're at home. Visitors to Selhurst Park this afternoon. And we're joined by Snooker's man of the moment, Stephen Henry. We get an update on today's Everest World Match Play Final. Hey, good afternoon. Good, good day, all. And it's nice to be back, James, after a oh, Rome expedition the, last the week. The sanity of even <laughs> this studio, saying after the pantomime of last week, it was incredible, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Pavarotti singing O Sole Mio, and 8,000 people got up and went out and bought an ice cream. It was well, remarkable. Miming to Sole Mio, is that Miming, yes, well, yes, yeah. pantomime, <coughs> but there you are. Yeah, but we had a good bit of fun anyway. That oh, we did, thing. we did at that. Right. Yeah. Well, we've got some matches off in the country today. Down in England in Division 2 in the Barclays League, at Blackburn Hall and Newcastle in Division 4, Scarborough and Wrexham. Now, up in Scotland, these are the matches on up there. The weather's pretty bad. They're on at Celtic, Dundee United, Ayr, Clydebank, St. Johnson, East Fife and Queen's Park. The only place you can see football is at those games. Right, well, we start today with a preview of ITV's live offering this weekend, Everton against Manchester City, which will see the return to Goodison Park of a trio of former Evertonians. Alan Harper joined Manchester City from Sheffield Wednesday this week for £150,000. Peter Reid goes to Main Road as player coach after leaving Queen's Park Rangers. And, of course, Howard Kendall takes over the manager's hot seat after Mel Machen's sacking. Martin Tyler reports. In his six years as manager of Everton, Howard Kendall lifted them from First Division also rands to regular recipients of the game's major honours. Wembley became a second home. Kendall rekindled a spirit at the club that had been sagging since his own distinguished playing days. Two league championships in 1987 and 1985 when Everton also produced a European pedigree in the Cup Winners' Cup. As Kendall's stock rose, so too did the demand for his services. Next stop, Bilbao, where he was able to work only with Basque players because of Athletic's firm traditions. Finishing fourth and seventh in his two seasons there represented success. But now it's Manchester where the weather wasn't too welcoming, but Manchester City's training ground seemed aptly named. I'm delighted with the squad I inherited. I mean, naturally, I, I want to bring in two or three of my own. Um, which You've are, wasted which, no time. No, that's right. I mean, people may say, well, he's been away two and a half years and he's jumped straight back into the transfer market. But I, I've gone into the transfer market with players I know. Um, the first objective for me when I came back was to, to try and uh, sign Peter Reid. I mean, he's a tremendous influence on the field and I know how interested he was with the, uh, to, to get on the coaching side. And, I, and I've, I've linked that uh, to Peter. And it's a tremendous signing for me. Um, Particularly given the fixture list, which has thrown up such a, an amazing I couldn't, go game back, for I couldn't go back then on my own, could I? <laughs> <laughs> Reed's resolution on the pitch will certainly be needed tomorrow. In front of the live television cameras, the intriguing prospect of Everton present against Everton past. Yeah, Howard did. I think that might have swayed the deal. No, Howard did say that it was. Uh, I mean, football throws up coincidence, and this is a big one. Obviously, uh, myself going back to um, Goodison with Howard in charge in his first game. So it's. I mean. I love playing. I love playing at Goodison. I enjoy the Everton, and it's a great opportunity for me and Howard to start. But we're at the bottom of the league, so we need points on a Sunday. Manchester City's Everton contingent was completed on Thursday. The versatile Alan Harper, who'd moved to Sheffield Wednesday after making a real contribution under Howard Kendall at Goodison Park, and Colin Harvey's switch from assistant to Kendall to Everton's present manager only adds to the spice of Sunday's showdown. The, the backbone of the side still there. You've still got the Southfolds, the, the Watsons, the Ratcliffe, the Sheedies and the Sharps. Um, great, great players. Um, Collins brought his own players in, which was natural. And they're a very, very good side. But um, You all know what to expect from them. Oh, yes. I mean, I, I think that possibly, I mean, the, these players will be just given a little bit more of a lift that, uh, that Peter and Alan and myself are going back there as well. You know, they'll be uh, even keener to show us uh, what it's all about. But we may show them a little bit. His knowledge of Manchester City's playing staff comes from watching them lose 2-1 at Southampton last week, where Clive Allen quickly offered a reminder that the new manager has inherited a reliable goal scorer. His priority, though, will be to tighten a leaky defence. Rod Wallace raced through to equalise for Southampton. 
And typical of City's recent ill fortune, they found substitute Barry Horn anxious to make an impact. Howard Kendall is certainly in a hot seat. City chairman Peter Swales isn't renowned for his patience. I think, I think what you find out is that the chairman has a, a tremendous passion for the club. And maybe the decisions he's made in the past, or definitely the decisions he's made in the past, he would probably think the interests of Manchester City. Certainly doesn't bother me. I, I, I have tremendous confidence in my own ability. Um, I hope to be successful. If not, then he will make the decision again, no doubt, and someone else will take over. But um, I, I can't ask for, for more than, than what I've received from him at the present time. He said, you go in, you're the manager, you make the decisions. As long as I, you keep me informed, you get on with the job. And that's what I'm doing. It is a long-term plan, too, for Howard Kendall, but there is a clause in his contract which would allow him to leave if he was England's choice to succeed Bobby Robson. I didn't want to be sitting here and people saying, well, who does he think he is? You know, he's advertising himself for the England job. Bobby Robson is the England manager. My name was linked with other names. The possibility, if there is a change, that there was a possibility they would approach me. In newspapers. Uh, I felt strongly that if that occasion arose, that I would be free to talk. Not for a club to, to hold out for a lot of money in, in compensation. That's all I wanted. I don't think anybody else would have done anything different. But that's out the way now. But the only thing I'm concerned about is Manchester City Football Club. But if you keep Manchester City in the first division and the job becomes vacant, the credentials will have been improved even more. I, I never talk about a job um, when someone is, is occupying that job at that particular time. But it would be fair to say that it's every football manager's ambition to become manager of England. I think it's a great, great honour. But at the moment, I feel it's a great, great honour that I'm managing this club. Well, Howard's former club, Everton, are experiencing a rocky patch. Just one win in the last eight matches. Last Saturday, they went down at White Hart Lane. Sharp would prefer the ball delivered earlier, like that. But essentially saw it coming and... Oh, there's a slip by Mavert. Cotty scores! Samways. Will Stewart collect this one? He will. Paul Stewart for Spurs and a goal for Lineker. Allen with the counter-attack. Lineker. Stewart! Spurs sweep up field to take the lead. So neither mm. Everton or City really ha having a good time of it at the moment, Jim, not, for the big match tomorrow. Not but really. Going yeah. back to Howard's point there about the, the England job, what do you mm. think? Well, what's interesting is that Martin's insistence, uh, I, th I think, that Howard or anybody might want it. I mean, looking at poor old Bob's face after the draw last week in Rome, <laughs> very few takers, I would have thought. But it, it's an amazing thing that everybody naturally assumes that somebody wants the England job. Uh -huh. And I don't think that's necessarily so I think you've got to be a particular kind of animal to be able to do the uh -huh. England job. I mean, Howard, quite rightly so, is saying he didn't want to hang around. Yes. I'm surprised a little bit, aren't you, that he, he went but, to Manchester City? Well, I am. I, but I, as we think, it's going to be a short term, and we'll, yeah. we'll see that at the end of the season. But tomorrow, we'll see how he goes against his old team. Right. That's he's, the big match he's live tomorrow. He's got a job tomorrow. on his hands, that's for sure, yep. isn't he? Everton against City at 3.25. Well, well, no live match last weekend meant that the first division goals weren't shown. But we've had many requests to show some of the top games from last Saturday. We start with the goal that took Arsenal back to the top of the table. And young Merson, Jim, come on as a substitute and gets a last gasp goal. Well, is he on his way back, Paul Merson? I'm not so sure about this one, would you reckon, Ian? Good cross. Well, Good I've... cross went wrong, went right, yeah? I think it was one of them, I'll get it in the box, and if it's in the oh, net. Oh, dear, when it's going for you, it's going for you, that's for sure. That is it? for sure. Yeah. The, the, uh, the Rangers... Glasgow Rangers play Arsenal yeah. up in uh, Glasgow on Tuesday. Yeah. Now, that is the champions of England versus the champions of Scotland. Yeah. That's, that should be a great match. I'm going That's up for that one, Jim. After news at 10, After isn't it? Tuesday that, night. That'll yeah. be worth waiting up for, that. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that'll be a game where they're, they're going to take it easy. I think they want to win that one both Oh, sides. yeah, could be yeah. a bit going on there. <laughs> a bit tasty. Well, staying with the, the top of the table, uh, Liverpool and Villa, Deadly Dogs team still yes. going well, Jim. Well, they're doing that remarkably well. I mean, in actual fact, Deadly Doug went out and did a lap of honour in front of the car. And it was yeah. empty at the time, of course. But here's Ian Olney. Didn't he take Lovely. that well? What a great... I do think he's that. an excellent young player. Yeah, he is. No yeah, doubt very about good that. Young player. 
He's, he's playing extremely well up front with David Platts. And this, this is, is where Barnsley copped it, wasn't it? He did it all himself. Yeah, the old hamstring went there. Yeah. It it's can't seem to be fit for today as it happens. No, it yeah. always looks nasty when a player does it on his own. That's without... right. Well, that's when you know they've got an injury that's for right. sure. Peter Beersley with a little side footage in yeah, the corner. Yeah, bit of a soft goal, that. Well taken goal, but, you know, it was outside the box. One would have thought Spencey might have done a bit better. Yeah, right. Well, Chelsea have been up there challenging yeah. so far this yeah, season, but all of a sudden they're leaking goals, aren't they? Nine, aren't they? I think, oh. in the last two games. Yeah, they're cracking up a bit, aren't they? This was Queen's Park Rangers last week. It is Queen's Park Rangers. Rangers, which, you know, with respect is not the the best, and that's Ferdinand knocking in the first one. And I don't mean that unkindly to Queen's Park Rangers, but if you're going to win championships, these are the teams you're going to have to beat. Well, having said they? that, they murdered Liverpool Queen's Park Rangers, so uh, yeah, they did. not bad. Yes, but yes, Alan Dickens yes. with a, a little volley yeah. there, not bad. Brought it on even Stephen, and I suppose the Chelsea lads thought that they were in for a good afternoon. But there he is again, that man, Ferdinand. <laughs> a new name to conjure with. A new with, name for us to conjure with there. <laughs> I thought this was a great goal, Mark Falco. It's amazing, he's still scoring really outstanding goals, he is. isn't he, Mark Falco? Really is doing very well. Looked a little offside, I thought, there, Colin Clark. Might have been. Might have been. But again, we, we didn't see where Lines the fullback position was. But, sore arm, you never know. Uh, quite but right. the other Clark, Steve Clark for Chelsea, yeah. managing to pull, up, pull another one back to make it 4 2. Mm. So there you are, yeah. yeah. Now, talking about goals, Jim, you'd be delighted to see that England manage to score at last at Wembley. Well, I'm very pleased. I mean, Brian Robson scoring the fastest England goal ever at Wembley, which I think is tremendous. Uh -huh. But the problem is, it, it's Brian Robson that's scoring again, isn't it? Uh -huh. And that's a, a very worrying thing, I think, that uh, we really don't seem to be able to score except for him. But we're all agreeing that uh, Bobby Robson has to experiment, and Absolutely. he's doing that. And, but, the thing, that, when I looked at the press after the match, people are already saying, well, he's no good, he's no good, or he yeah. is good. On one game, I don't think you oh, can no, do that. Oh, no, you've got to give people a few games. Sure. And, uh, that's for sure. And again, I'd like to see him play Paul Gascoigne. I think it's quite remarkable that after a, a superb England B performance, uh -huh. he's, he, he seems um, not to want to play Gascoigne. I, I don't know why. I, I, well, there's I, been a big furore in the paper this morning where Terry Venables is coming back at Bobby saying, you know, you, my boy is good enough. And, you yeah. know, that, which I, I think is a little bit silly. I don't think managers at club level should, uh, should get carried away on that. I don't think they should, but I think Gascoigne should be given his chance here. And I think oh, everybody yes. in the country wants to see Gascoigne. And if yeah. he falls flat, fair enough. Yeah. But at least give the lad a go. Oh, yeah, I think we'll all go along with that. Well, that's it for part one. When we come back, we've action from last night. We hear from Stephen Henry, and we investigate the strange case of the team who are both away and at home this afternoon. Stay with us. Welcome back. And today's First Division programme includes Charlton against Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. Nothing odd you may think about that, except that Palace have never been away to Charlton since their ground sharing arrangement started four years ago. It throws up some odd situations, as Alan Parry reports. The marriage of Palace and Charlton has never been consummated. After four years under the same roof, their relationship is still that of landlord and reluctant lodger. And today, Selhurst Park will be suffering from a split personality. The club souvenir shop has Christmas gifts for both sets of fans. The ticket arrangements are confusing for Palace regulars, denied their usual place on the terraces. It's a bizarre situation, and Palace chairman Ron Nodes can see the lighter side of it. Well, the advertising hoardings around the ground, they will all be changed around. Um, we, of course, uh, our fans will be in the away area, which they will find unusual and find quite unacceptable when they're turning up at the box office and asking for tickets in the areas where they were standing or sitting previously. And yet some of your fans are treating this, I believe, as an away game. Tell us about that. Well, they're going... Um, the away travel is organising away travel. It's leaving from Selhurst as it would normally for an away game. Uh, but it's going around London to see the sights of a packed lunch and it will arrive here in time for kickoff, as it would, on a normal away fixture. What about the team? They go in the away dressing room for the first time. They've, they've never been in the away dressing room. Uh, Steve and I will sit in the director's seats of the away team for the first time. 
uh, which is most unusual, really. Earlier this week, Charlton's plans to leave Selhurst Park and move back to their old home, the Valley, suffered a setback, and it now seems they'll have to carry on paying the rent. Although Charlton may feel that they're lodgers, um, we would like them to feel that um, they share the stadium and they share the ground. Um, it's not our fault, really, that um, they've carried on as lodgers. I mean, the scoreboard here, Palace paid for, Charlton were invited to share and declined. The family enclosure here, Palace paid for, Charlton were invited to share and they declined. So they have had the offer of facilities, they haven't taken them up and I think that's in the long term is their loss. But perhaps they've had one eye on the fact that they weren't here on a permanent basis, therefore they've not really been too interested in sharing in improvements. A week ago, Charlton were at home, if you see what I mean, to Millwall and took the lead when Paul Williams set up youngster Scott Minto to score his first ever league goal. Just five minutes later, Millwall equalised from a Paul Stevenson corner. The goal headed in by Steve Antrobus. The final score, one all. Meanwhile, Palace had a genuine away trip when they met Manchester United at Old Trafford. United taking the lead after only nine minutes, the scorer, Russell Beardsmore. Five minutes before half-time, the Palace double act of Wright and Bright created an equaliser. Ian Wright's cross, Mark Bright's header. Nine minutes into the second half, Manchester United's defence was pulled apart and there was an unhappy moment for goalkeeper Jim Layton as Bright's header sneaks in. His second goal of the game, Palace's winner, and the perfect boost for the away team today playing at home. They claim they'll have twice as many fans on this unique day. Um, I think we've got a better chance of winning an away game than we've had this season. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pleased we beat Manchester United away last week, but because um, it could have been that we could have been looking for our first away victory on our home ground. <laughs> Uh, it really is incredible, isn't so it? It's funny, I mean, that, isn't it? Will, will, will Ron Nodes be first to the bar? Because as visiting chairman, he won't have to pay, will he? <laughs> I mean, that's great. It's, all, it's all very confusing. Well, the supporters go to there, the supporters club there. I, the I don't know. Club. I mean, it, it is very... Uh, it's it's going to be a suck it and see situation, yeah. this, isn't it? I mean, it, it's all so different. And and when you think about it, I mean, both teams will run out. They wonder what way they'll <laughs> kick him. Will there be an yeah. be ironic if there's an own goal this afternoon? Yeah. Right there. And on Tuesday, what's yeah. remarkable, as you know, they play in the Zenith Cup, yeah. and Palace are at home to Charlton, so they got to switch <laughs> the whole thing back again. I mean, it's lovely. Isn't it's it? A, it's a it could only happen in this country. Yeah, that it? it really could. Right. Well, and, really and at Crystal Palace, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> well, a brief look at the second division now, which illustrates that West Ham are losing touch with the leaders. The Hammers are seventh, but 14 points behind Sheffield United at the top. And it's their away form that's letting them down, Jim. Yes, it is indeed, actually. Uh, they're losing touch a little bit. There they are at Bradford. And a uh, goal coming up. Uh, who's this? Mark Leonard, isn't it? Mark Leonard. Oh, and, we nearly and saw it. With five seconds to go. <laughs> with five seconds to go, Mark Leonard scored on the St. and Greasy show. But <laughs> well, there you go. And there's old Chipper putting through Mark Ward. Yeah. He does well here. He did well so, here because yeah. that was a, a very tight angle. It was a dodgy one. Yeah. But, uh, there you are. They must in. have thought it was all over because oh, in absolutely. the last minute. The well, last few seconds. <laughs> last wasn't minute, it? yeah. Jimmy Quinn. Jimmy Quinn. There you go. Yeah. It just shows you, doesn't it, what can happen. Yeah. Eh? It's amazing. 2 1 Bradford and 5 0 to St. and Greavesy. <laughs> right now, one game from last night in Division 3, featuring promotion candidates Bristol Rovers, who visited Gresham Road in Crewe. Crewe crew looking in, very looking, like Arsenal, I yeah, think. They do they? look like Arsenal. I don't know whether they play like them, St. I haven't been up with Crewe for a long time. But, but who is this? Kenny Swain. Kenny Swain. 37 year old Ken. Still yeah. going strong. Well done, Ken. That's a good goal. So they had no change at the top there, Bristol Rovers still top. Tranmere, who drew a nil-nil last night with Chester, remain there in yeah. fifth. Right, we have uh, a couple of games, I gather, that are coming off. Grimsby and Southend are off. Grimsby, Southend, yeah. and... Uh, and Clyde Bank and Falkirk. Oh, right? now, that is going to upset a lot of people's afternoon, that, Clyde Bank. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, the weather certainly taking its toll in Scotland this afternoon. But the Rangers game at Dundee United goes ahead. The champions will take over the leadership if they can mirror what Aberdeen did to Dundee United last Saturday. Patient build-up from United. Van der Hoorn, that's a poor ball from him. Gives it away to Mason. Now Charlie Nicholas. A shooting chance. Hits it beautifully. And it's a goal for Aberdeen. Alan Main got his hand to it, but couldn't keep it out. 1-0 Aberdeen. And there's the captain pushing forward, Halleck McLeish. Sees Robertson in room on the left. There's the attempted left foot cross. And there's the right one. Bet at the far post. Bet can't get his head to it. The ball dropping, bouncing about in the penalty area. Here's Mason. Mason gets in. And it's a goal for Aberdeen. It's number two. Some more dreadful defending from Dundee United. And Aberdeen cash in quite beautifully. Mason scores. Well, Aberdeen going well, Jim. Mm. Real challenges yeah. for Rangers this season. Well, those of you who have no game to go to this afternoon and are planning an afternoon by the fire, stay tuned to this channel. The grand final of sport, Sports Masters follows and then the Everest World Match Play Snooker Final continues with John Parrott and Jimmy White level at eight frames all after the first day. Now, setting the scene for us at Brentwood is none other than John McCready. Now, I'm reliably told that when you pair of deadbeats were child prodigies, soccer's maximum wage was still £10 a week. But nowadays, Scotland's wonder band, Stephen Hendry, at 20, is on the verge of earning £1 million from prize money alone. He's already picked up £930,000. So can you lend us 50p, Bear? Well, for a new suit. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. I'll give you the name of my clothes you later. But seriously, doesn't all this wealth... Doesn't it dampen your enthusiasm? Doesn't it stop you being really keen and determined um, to win? No, not really. I don't really see much of it. I mean, Ian Doyle takes care of a manager. Um, I just get on with a snooker and but, he does a business. And you don't really play for the money, you play for the titles? That's right, yeah. And I still haven't achieved what I want to achieve and that's be world champion. Well, the Master Cuman Steve Davis's devoted following are still bearing up. But I, re I realise, Ben, that the young girls watching us, most of them fancy me, of course, but one or two of them with bad, ropey eyesight might reckon <laughs> you a bit of a prospect. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I would hope so. But are you so obsessed with snooker that it rules out your private life? Um, more or less. I mean, I've, you've got to be, have a lot of tunnel vision, you know. If you want to be number one, you've got to sort of sacrifice a lot. I mean, it doesn't mean you don't have a private life, but you've got to sacrifice a lot to get there. Now, you're a Jam Tart supporter, and Hearts, of course, not playing today against the no. Premier Division leaders, Aberdeen. Do you often go to Tyne Castle? No, but two years ago, we should have won the league. I went there twice and they lost twice, so I think Alec McDonald will like me to stay away. <laughs> Good thinking. But luck plays a tremendous amount in, in soccer, of course, but even more in snooker. Now, let's just watch this from last night's match play final with Jimmy White here. He's down on the shot. He's going to pop the blue here. Just watch this, smashes it in, and look at the green, just watch the green, it goes on and on, and inevitably in it goes. Terrible wow. luck there for Jimmy White, he loses down. the frame, goes 8-5 down, that's a real sickening when that happens to you. Oh, obviously, I mean, he was 40, 50 points in front, and looked like winning the frame. But luck does balance out in the end, doesn't it? Especially in a best of 35 frame match, um, it's bound to even itself out after a while. Now, it's eight frames each. Um, it's the first to 18 wins. Come and give us a tip. You've played them both. You're well, the four more. I, I tipped Parrott yesterday, but after Jimmy finishing eight all from eight five down, I think he'd, I, th I would fancy Jimmy now. He's on the way back. You mean? I would think so. Yeah. Well, the bookies make um, Parrott the six to five on favourite, and I reckon he's the smoothest thing to come out of Merseyside since Red Rum. And you can get 11 to 10 against White. Now, many housewives reckon that Jimmy White wins some lad as the little boy lost. There's a feeling here that he's not going to lose this weekend, and that in fact it's going to be a white Christmas. But Saint, I know you're going to go along with the ban here. After all, they say you're earning almost as much as he does these days. <laughs> not quite, not quite. God dear. You used to say that snooker was a sign of a misspent youth and we're talking about millionaires, yeah. you know, 20. I noticed they've finally found McCrick out in racing and put him onto <laughs> snooker. Something he knows it's, something about, yeah. I'll tell you what, if he walked down Brentwood High Street like that, people would think it was Jacob Marley from Ghost of Christmas <laughs> Past, wouldn't they, dressed like that? <laughs> yeah, he'd certainly <laughs> dress for the Christmas, the Christmas festive period. Who do you fancy in the snooker, Jim? Uh, I'll go for Jimmy White. I always do. Yeah. Well, I hope big <laughs> John wins it. I'm 
pal of Big John's from Mersey says, I hope he wins it. Right, finally today, an aspect of footballers' lives that seldom get reported when punch-ups, brawls and sending-offs always make the headlines. I'd like to introduce you to a very brave young man named John Paul Hibbard. He's 12 years old and suffers from cystic fibrosis. He's been waiting for over a year for a heart and lung transplant and time is now running out for him. This week, he was visited by three players from Sheffield Wednesday. This goes to show that some players do recognise the responsibilities and are prepared to help people like young John. And they're going to sign it for you. Yes, well, good luck, John, and uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Wish you a very Merry Christmas. And he was wishing uh, us a Merry Christmas as well. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't and, it? And, you know, idea. young John is here, and well done to the Sheffield Wednesday footballers and all the footballers who, at this time of the year, go around to, well, to the hospitals and I, visit I the youngsters. I think that's the side that the media don't show with all the punch-ups and everything else that goes on, that professional footballers do this sort of thing all the year yes, round, not just at Christmas, but all the year round, and it should be reported a bit more. Yeah. OK. Well, that's your lot for another week. We have a Christmas special next Saturday, including a competition that could test your memory of football in the 80s. We hope to see you for that. For now, bye. Bye.